I could put my yak in it. <laughs> Welcome back <laughs> to Counterculture, where you never know what's going to happen, uh, even right. when we hit the record button. I know. And Pastor Mark uh, just starts talking about yaks. <laughs> Being cold. Which is a very interesting thing, because I talked to a lady yesterday who told me that her and her husband own yaks. Ooh. It's great. I could probably preach that. But that's not what we're doing we're in Counterculture. So I got no, a question. No yaks today. Question for you today, <clears throat> Pastor Mark, and it's this. When we talk about counterculture, all right, we're talking about things that are, are going against kind of the norm flow of things, right? Jesus had this word phrase that he used in the Sermon on the Mount several times, right? And it kind of goes something like this. You've heard it said this, right? But I tell you this, right? So when we think about counterculture, right, we think about the fact that the world is constantly telling us, hey, this is what you need to think, this is what you need to believe, this is what you need to do, right? When we look at that and we put together the fact that Jesus said, hey, what I really want you to do is take a step back from that, from the flow getting carried away, right, with what everybody else is doing, and I want you to start I want you to start thinking different so that you can be different, right? So with that in mind, off the top of your head, so we were just talking about this, people out there don't know, you have no idea what we're talking about until I framework it and keep talking to you actually get it, right? So my question to you is, what are some of the things that, that you think Jesus said that are really, really countercultural to what we're being told today? Forgive. What do you mean? Forgive those who hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not, we're not that, you know, you just, you cancel them today. <clears throat> oh, you hurt me. I just, I'm not going to have anything to do. I'm done. I'm done. I love that. See, now you got, now you paused me because now I'm stopping to think and that, that Jesus was really preaching against the whole cancer culture, right? Cancel yeah. and cancer. Well, and cancer too. Both, yeah, he's, both, he doesn't right? like either one, but go ahead. Yes. Right, but the cancel culture where He doesn't like the cancer. He likes the people who. Yeah, I have it, but he doesn't like cancer. Yeah, and right. we we frequently I I run into I'm not gonna speak for you, but I run into people who you know their definition of forgiveness, their definition of love, their definition of the things that are in the Bible, right, uh, seems to be a little off from what Jesus said, right. So when we when we talk about forgiveness, because you talk about this a lot with with shame and things like that, right. When we talk about forgiveness, what's What's the key? Because the world believes in forgiveness, but it's defined a little bit differently than what Jesus was saying. So break it down for me for a second. And what exactly is it that Jesus is looking for in forgiveness? And how might that contrast what the world is looking for? Tell me, I, I need you to qualify that. Tell me what you're thinking, how you see the world seeing forgiveness. So I think the, the world's idea of forgiveness is, is very spotty. It's all over the place, right? If it benefits me, I will forgive okay. you, okay. right? So again, or, and or, if you pay a price, I'll forgive you, right? So again, we've taken some biblical concepts, right? There certainly is a price that is paid. There are consequences for sin, all that kind of stuff. But, but forgiveness is like after you do your 30 years of prison, Penance, right, yeah. then I'll forgive you. <clears throat> Yeah, he doesn't tell us to do that. No. He he tells us to forgive as your father has forgiven you. Which is defined and, as how? Um, well, he just f forgets it. He just, it's it's as far as the east is from the west, so are your sins separated from you. He, he, he doesn't hold it against us. So now let me ask you a question. No, that doesn't mean we forget. People get forgive and forget. That was my question. Okay. <laughs> right. I love what Tracy Strawberry says. She'll sometimes you have to love people from a distance. You can forgive someone. It doesn't mean you rush right back in there because yeah. they may not be safe. Well, they may not be safe. And, the, and, and that, is, that is how it is twisted sometimes. Forgiveness is a very interesting thing. Yeah. We want it, mm -hmm. are, and we want it quickly, but we don't always want to give it. Because if I forgive them, doesn't that mean that I'm letting them off the hook? Right. No. It means you're taking your hands from around their neck. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, I'm not going to let you have control. Forgiveness is, is more for me than it is someone else. I have forgiven people that have no clue I've forgiven them. Mm. And, and, they, and some people don't have any clue that they did anything to hurt me. doesn't matter. It's for me to let them go so that I can move on. Now, that sounds selfish in some ways, mm -hmm. but 
part of our problem today, and I see this in churches. Oh my gosh, here we are. We have the the, the king of forgiveness, okay? Right. Yeah. And yet, I hate to say it, but the church is the one place where we have the hardest time forgiving each other. Now, again, why is that? So there are people who are, are looking at this going, no, we don't. No, we don't, Pastor. Yeah. What church do you, Pastor? Yeah, because I'm going right? to go to it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. but, but yeah. so what do you mean by that? Because I would be in whole agreement with you. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it goes to what I just did. Part of what I just did my chasing the wind on mm-hmm. is we're, we're not at that point of surrendering to let God do the work in us that he wants to do. Yeah, amen. We're still hanging on to pride, and we're still hanging on to shame. In the church, we deal a lot with guilt, mm-hmm. but we don't deal with shame. Well, you don't know what they did to me. It, okay, here's the thing I'm finding interesting. This is this has kind of come up <clears throat> for me, so I'm going to air my dirty laundry here. Here's what I find funny is, is people have no problem. It's okay for people to correct the pastor, especially in these days. A lot of times pastors are getting a lot of criticism. Right. Very hard to pastor these days. I'm getting pastors that are, I, I talk to, and they're like, yeah, I got people griping about it. I don't do this right. I don't do that right. I've got, I get one person tells me I preach too long. I get another person says, Pastor, you could preach another hour. Who do I listen to? I listen to him. I listen to him. Yep. Yep. People say, how long do you preach, Mark, till I'm done? Until he tells me you're done Amen. preaching, okay? Amen. So <clears throat> here, here's what I find funny. So, but as soon as the pastor goes and says, hey, what you're doing there, you shouldn't be doing, <laughs> people puff up like toads and get all mad but the pastor yeah. is supposed to say wait a minute here okay if we're followers of christ and we're in this together mm-hmm. we're, we all have all things in common right we have yep. all things in common yep. we're supposed to be in this life together but how we get we're so raw we're so wounded we're so tender again i always a, a, a good friend of mine passed away last fall the nazarene pastor used to say that the church's job is to change the culture not the other way around, but the culture has changed the church, and it has for years. Mm-hmm. Take someone's spot where they sit in church every week. They're sitting in my spot. I can't believe they did yep. that. Yep. Well, I can't believe we were. I can't believe you played that song or that song was sung, Pastor. Because part of it is is good old fashioned carnality. Amen. Amen. The flesh. We have let the flesh take over ourselves. Right. I want what I want when I want it. And that is because we're consumers in church. We're not contributors. And in case, yeah. and, and we don't want to. The pastor's got to forgive, but no one else has to forgive. Mm. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You know, Paul said, follow my example as I follow Christ. Well, if we're following the example of our pastors, and I have pastors who I'm, I'm like, who I look up to, and I say, okay, I, you know, give me some help here because I know right now I'm clouded in my judgment. Mm-hmm. That those scriptures from Philippians 1 6, he, God was working on me last night. That part of that was last night. God, I was out on my deck praying, and God was working on me, and I had to forgive because it was eating me up. The person has no clue that I needed to forgive them, or I it was important for me. But God said, Mark, you're you're letting this tear you down. How someone last night at our prayer meeting, and we, we pray for revival, and they said. They pray, God, show us what is keeping us from having revival. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, one of the things is unforgiveness. It's funny because we were up at, I was up at Lakeview yesterday, and we were talking about that same thing. A lady kept bringing up, like, what, what is it that's stopping the work from happening at Lakeview? And what's stopping it from happening, you know, all around us? And I think uh, certainly unforgiveness is, is one of those things. And I, I think it, it's amazing because I think people think pastors are, you know, abnormal you know, spiritual creatures, and sometimes people get some well. insight into <laughs> us, but they realize that like, there's a yeah. process. I mean, I don't think yeah. the average person doesn't know, uh, very few people know about the fact that, you know, I have a, a mental process of working through things, and it, it does. It, it starts off with a sometimes a frustration, right, with somebody, and then it gets to a, all right, I gotta, I gotta do this, and then you're working yourself through, all right, I gotta forgive. Right, and, and again, they don't see any of that. They don't even hear it sometimes. Yep. But yep. but you get that, right? Like yes. it's it's this. I sit in my barn. I you know I do my chores, and the first few shovelfuls of uh, manure is uh, you know forceful in nature as I'm gritting <laughs> yes. my teeth and me. But by the time you're done, you're you've worked through a process where you're like, 
All right, yep, I know I need to do this, yes. right? Yeah. And a lot of people, they don't get insight into that, so they think it's yeah. just this instantaneous thing. Like, oh, yes. you're just a great guy. You just forgive everybody all the yeah. time. You're like, uh, no, yeah, not until I work through exactly it. exactly how that yeah. works, right? Well, exactly, because you're talking about, you know, throwing the manure. You know, I'm out there, and I'm just like, you know, on my deck, and I, and I have a, it's a 39-foot deck, and I yeah. I probably wore some boards out on it, you know, <laughs> pace out there, and I'm, and, and, and it's like, I can almost see Jesus sitting on the swing. Yep. Just swinging away, letting me, Lord, rah, 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 rah. I'm just done. I don't know how many times I say, I'm just done. And I, I almost can see Jesus saying, are you done? Yeah. <laughs> can I talk now? Yeah, can I talk now? Are, are you done? Are you done? Why don't you come sit by this, on the swing? Sit on the swing me for a little bit here, son, and let's have a talk, you know? And Okay, all right. And, and then it's like, you ready to get back to doing this? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and, it, and the same pastor friend of mine that passed away used to always say, love is patient. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I skip the love is patient, love is yeah, kind. Yeah, kind go, of goes together. Go to the other one. Yeah, go to the other one. Whereas the person love kills and, you know, wants to, like, yeah. smite them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So that's Real not, love yeah. never waits. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a good t-shirt right Rushes in. That's and right. And shoots Takes. first, asks questions later. Yeah. But I love, I love what you said that, you know, Jesus told us to rethink, right? Like, you've heard it yeah. said this, I say this, because he knows that unforgiveness, what it destroys, right? Yes. And yeah. for too many of us, unforgiveness comes a little bit easier when we know somebody else has been punished. Right? Yes. It was always yeah. easier for me to forgive my siblings yeah. for pulling my hair or doing all, you know, all the, yes. the nasty yes. things that siblings do when they were sitting in a chair, yes. right? Or they had just you been spanked. Right, yeah. like, oh, I'll forgive them now. Yeah. They just Can I watch mom him. while you wail on them? Yeah. That's yeah. right, and, and you know what? I love that because we we often have that right there, that whole mindset. Like, Lord, let me watch you discipline this person. Yeah. And, but, and then where I'll do, but where does that? So let's take it countercultural. Even goes farther, Andy. I think that unforgiveness comes because we won't commit. Yeah. And submit to God. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. We're afraid that he's not going to give people what exactly. they deserve. Exactly. He won't do it right. He won't do it the way I want him to do it. Yeah. You know, I, I remember when I, I've had people do this, you know, they complain and they come to me and complain, well, so-and-so did such a, I said, okay, I'm going to just tell him to leave the church. Yeah. Well, no, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> well, no, I'm going to tell him to leave the church. I said, but here's the problem. I said, I'm going to get rid of all the people who upset someone else in the church. Yeah. I said, and then there's going to be no one left here because all of us at one time, it's human nature. So you not you wouldn't look be what preaching. happened to the disciples when James and John you know said wasn't it James and John said oh you know put one of us on one side and one on the other and the other disciples got upset about it Barnabas and Paul over poor Mark Mark was a good kid and they just you know the marks always get picked on if they just would have just you know Barnabas saw yep. what a great guy he was. I'm real. I'm really milking it. Aren't you are, you, but you, I, I'm, I relate like, to John Mark often. You know, John Mark. Gets, he, he needed a little process, and, yeah. and Paul was like, "No process, man. No Just process. Get it he like is, this. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. don't we do? I'm going to tell you. Don't we do that? We think. Well, they went to the altar. They got saved. They should be all right. Amen. Oh, we're forgetting about growth in grace. But, and, and some people just they, they learn different, right? So part yes, of being, yeah. part of being counterculture is we we do have we have a culture right now with a bunch of consumers that just whatever whatever somebody tells them, boom, this is the newest thing. We got to have it. We got to do this. Yep. We gotta, yep. But you know what? God is asking us to be producers, which means that yeah. we need to be way more than that, right? Yeah. We need to. Yeah. You've heard it said this. I tell you. Yeah. I yeah. tell you this. Just, just don't, just don't tell me, Jesus. This is what I've heard. <laughs> just true. tell me what I want to hear. Don't, I don't. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, uh, we're gonna leave it there for right now. Uh, we'll come back, visit some more of this stuff because this is exactly what we're talking about in counterculture. Is hey, forgiveness. I'm sure there's a few other words that we can pull out of our our little basket and we could chew on a little bit about how hey, we got to do this better than the world does it, right? Yeah, so absolutely. thanks for joining us on Counterculture. We'll see you next time uh, for another episode.